well, having been in a wheelchair now for nearly two years, um, it's the one thing any father wants to do is to is to walk his daughter down the aisle. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't possible, but this was the next best thing, was being able to get up and uh, walk across the dance floor to the microphone and do my welcoming speech. Explain, if you can, how it was possible and, and why it was so important for you to, to not be in the wheelchair that day. Um, it was possible because uh, I was loaned the use of a the exoskeleton, the Rex Bionics uh, exoskeleton, um, which uh, we came across at the uh, an exhibition in Birmingham and uh, got talking to the people on the stand and sort of, say tongue-in-cheek, said, it would be lovely to walk down the aisle. And they said, oh, that sounds like an interesting idea. And that's... Well, we didn't come to fruition on that, but we managed to use it... Uh, so I could do my speech. You were a keen cyclist. I think up to 200 miles a week you were cycling before the accident. What was the sort of sense of, I suppose, freedom like for you finally? Um, well, as a cyclist, I used to go out any any time, any weather. Um, but being confined to a wheelchair is uh, uh, obviously very frustrating. Uh, at least with the exoskeleton, I had you know, the chance to... Uh, to feel a little bit normal, to be uh, back at the right height, be able to on, be on the same eye level as people, other people, and uh, um, it gives you a sense of uh, of being normal again. Thank you very much indeed. Well, I know that Irving's been working with the Aspire charity in the hope that you can help make this sort of thing more accessible for people with similar spinal injuries uh, in the future, and the hope is that it make this kind of thing more available to those with his sort of injuries.